Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Brian from Kingdom Hearts Union Cross Nation and for today's video, we're gonna be going over the new stained glass medals that I'm expecting to come out or be announced later tonight. It'll probably be up tomorrow as well. Um, the main reason I'm saying that is simple because of the fact that when you go and take a look at the shop, pretty much almost every single banner only has one day left. Like literally everything. Um, so it only makes sense that they're gonna have to release like a new banner tonight um as like along with the vip deal if they don't do it tonight it's gonna be tomorrow for sure so and i have no doubt in my mind that it's going to be the new f stained glass metal so i figure i might as well go ahead and make this video for you guys uh i've already made my metal analysis articles for them they've been up for a few days um and they just became publicly available i think today as well so i've basically already done my research into looking into these new metals because i remember last time when i made my videos talking about the stained glass metals because of the fact that we had six stained glass metals come out all at once uh it was really complicated to like research about them and I, even d just going over those took three whole videos to go over those fully um but luckily because of the fact this time it's only three medals this time for stained glass it makes things so much more simplistic and a lot of the same type of methods that i used to record data for the last stained glass medals i've also did the same thing for these three stained glass medals as well and so we're going to be going over all of that today um, as well as things such as like which of the three stained glass medals if you are going to pull for one which of the three are the best uh whether or not you should pull for them how good are they are they meta are they game breaking uh do they actually replace like the foretellers Kyrie x plus and such we're gonna go through all of that now before we go ahead and start today's video i want to quickly transfer over to today's sponsor for this video this video is sponsored by simplora simplora is a simple all-in-one website e-commerce blog membership site funnel and landing page builder whether you're a musician blogger or entrepreneur simplora has over 70 pre-made templates to help you get started on your website building journey everything's in the cloud meaning there's nothing to download patch or install Upgrading your website provides you access to unlimited hosting, automatic SSL integration, the ability to connect your domain, and unlimited 24-7 email support. Sign up for Simplora today and start building a website with their 14-day free trial. Use my promo code KHUXNATION when upgrading your website to save 20% off. Visit the link down below to get started on your 14-day free trial. Guys, I'm not gonna lie, Simplora is by far one of the best websites I have found in a very long time. It's actually personally what I use for my website as of right now as as well. If you've ever visit my website recently at k2xnation.com, you can see like just how absolutely beautiful it is, okay? And I would not have been able to do all of this if it wasn't for Simplora. Now, for any of you guys that happen to know me somewhat well, uh, such as like if you're on Discord and then I talk to you guys on a somewhat regular basis, you guys know, uh, even just from watching my channel, I, I'm pretty straightforward <laughs> about my opinions about what I like and don't like and such. Um, and as such, I, I will never recommend anything to you guys that I don't personally believe in um, or don't think actually has value and potential. And Simplora is by far one of those things. Um, just to even kind of point out a few of the things that I really appreciate about Simplora is the fact that if you happen to remember my old website, okay, like this is the old version of my website and stuff, it got the job done, but it was very simplistic. Although with Simplora, especially as of recently, I've been getting so many additional new features for such low cost, it's absolutely insane. For a lot of the other websites that are out there as of right now, um, for a bunch of the services that, would, that I've basically been wanting for a long time to put on my site, other websites will typically try and like nickel and dime you in order to get like these extra features for parts of your domain and website and such. Um, one of them, for example, just being getting access to my analytics. In the past, I had to just connect Google Analytics um, to my website without, you know, for you know, to do it for free, but with Simplora, it's actually just included in the package. Um, and like even right here, you can kind of see like some of the statistics that I have right there just from my own analytics. Uh, you guys might have noticed that I have my own login feature now for my website. Normally, that would be anywhere from like 50 to 200 bucks on other websites extra <laughs> on top of what you already pay for the website. But Simplora includes it for free. And like I, I by far will definitely take full advantage of this feature in the future once I can start like polishing some of the other parts of my website before I can get there. Another thing, especially as a content creator that I truly appreciate as well, is the fact that in terms of like 
any merchandise or store that I put on my website, there is a 0% transaction fee, um, which is practically unheard of for most websites because uh, any type of website that hosts stuff for you typically will ask for a you know, small cut in return. Um, whereas Simpora is just like, nah, it's you're making the stuff, it's all yours. And I, I truly appreciate that, especially like coming from a low budget content creator myself already. Like I, I need every penny, penny I can get. So for, for the price that Simplora is asking for and for the amount of value that I'm getting in return, it's just, I just think it's by far one of the best deals that I have seen in a very long time. So if you ever want to make a website, I, I highly recommend Simplora. All right, so first of all, we're gonna go ahead and take a look at what each of the stained glass models are gonna do, uh, the sums individually, and then we'll go ahead and talk about them. Uh, so essentially all three stained glass models are the exact same thing. Uh, we have one for each respective attribute. So we have number seven for power, we have number eight for magic, and number nine for speed. And I'll go ahead and tell you guys what their abilities are. Uh, stained glass number seven is a power upright metal tier eight AOE zero gauges deal six hits has a total max multiplier of a 29.70 to a 32.5 and this is his ability he has overwrite which means that he will set your own general strength upright strength reverse strength and power strength to plus seven tiers he will set the opponent's general defense upright reverse power defense to minus seven tiers he increases your guilt buff to 110%. He resets enemy countdown. He refills 10 gauges and inflicts more damage to lower the slot number. Stained glass number eight and nine are the exact same thing except for speed and magic instead. Now to answer your guys' questions real quick, do these metals affect the meta? The short answer is going to be no, they don't affect the meta. However, there is a little bit of an asterisk <laughs> to that statement. Now, if you happen to go ahead and go to my tab on my website, k2xnation.com, I do have a current meta tab where I try to update as much as possible uh, to be up to date with what the current meta actually is. So you can see like right here on the left-hand side, I have universal setups on the right-hand side, I have single target setups. So these are great for like, you know, inspiration for PVP or against, you know, hard events like Organization 13 and such. Um, so I have these two different setups and I've already gone ahead and checked to see whether or not any of these setups would be affected by the stained glass metals. And like I said before, the short answer is no. The only actual stained glass metal that actually affected the meta was going to be the stained glass number nine. And that was simply because of the fact that as of right now, the best AOE metals within the entire game are actually the four teller medals and we already know this and when we got the four teller medals we got five of them we had two power two magic and one speed the reason why stained glass number nine affects the meta is simply because of the fact that we only got one speed four teller whereas we got two magic and two power and if you take a look at any of the like meta setups such as like if we go ahead and just click fenrir for example over here uh, we can see right here, like the, the meta setup for Fenrir involves both of the power foretellers, okay? And most of the Keyblades tend to replicate this type of trend, okay? Um, the only actual like setups and Keyblades that can't do this are of course speed Keyblades or setups simply because of the fact that we don't have two speed foretellers. We only have one and that's Gula. Um, and because of this, this is actually where stained glass number nine is going to come in and kind of like take that second foreteller's place. Uh, so like, for example, if I picked, I believe it was Starlight. This is currently what the meta setup for the Starlight is. Um, and then once the stained glass number nine actually comes out, I would actually replace uh, this previous stained glass with the newest stained glass instead. Um, that's basically what I'm trying to show you guys is for the most part, the only setups that actually got affected are the primarily speed type setups uh, in terms of the meta. But in regards to everything else, this, the new stained glass metals do not affect the meta at all whatsoever. Now, remember that asterisk I mentioned at the very beginning of the video? That asterisk was in regards to the fact that now these are the meta setups. However, however, this is also to keep in mind that most people within the game, including myself, are not going to actually have these meta setups. The whole reason we actually take a look at the meta in the first place is simply because of the fact that the way that any competitive game works is that the people at the top, whatever the strategy they're using is called the meta. And 
it will naturally try and trickle its way down down the tier levels so naturally for everybody who's obviously like not like top 500 top 100 top 10 whatever uh you're still gonna try and like you know go after those type of like medals and setups or at least replicate them as much as possible simply because those are the meta that's the whole reason why we enjoy looking at the meta however it's because of this that i just wanted to point out a few things that it's because of the fact that most people aren't going to have the meta set up um it's actually going to be for most people where the stained glass medals are actually going to shine and that is simply because of the fact unless you actually are able to obtain like one of each type for each foreteller and such to replicate these type of meta setups and such you can actually use a stained glass metal instead to not only gain the almost basically the same type of benefits that the foretellers give you but actually get a little bit more of an extra edge as well um, because then you can do some extra cool jank now for quite some time including myself pretty much the staple advice for quite a while has been to essentially like try and chase after getting both a copy of Kyrie EX plus and Shion EX plus if possible. However, however, these stained glass medals actually kind of solve that issue where you no longer actually need both copies of the metal anymore. You can actually get away with only having one copy of either of them. Uh, so you don't actually need both Kyrie and Shion EX plus anymore now with the stained glass medals. Even if you don't get the correct version the correct attribute stained glass metal that you might have wanted to get instead you can still take advantage of it because just a single copy of kyra shion ex plus combined with a stained glass metal together is actually very effective the type of trends of thoughts that these stained glass metals are going to have are pretty much more or less very similar to what the last stained glass metals have as well they work very well with the most recent kairi or shion ex uh, metals although of course in certain types of situations they can still work just as well by themselves uh, without them too it just kind of depends on your setup and what type of mode you're trying to do although what i have to say is the biggest advantage about these new stained glass metals is that you can easily do something like this like on the dark Knoll, for example like i have here on screen where obviously kairi ex plus only provides upright buffs and debuffs so normally if i were to use her on the dark knot i would still need other metals uh other reverse metals to provide those reverse buffs and debuffs to make the dark knot fully usable and viable however with the new stained glass metals uh, they actually fit perfectly in the second slot of every single reverse keyblade <laughs> um and also considering the fact that they provide both reverse buffs and debuffs as shown here like on the right hand screen you are completely fine to only have one copy of Kyrie shown ex plus and run one of the stained glass metals uh in the second slot and you are fine uh for any of the reverse metals the same thing applies for upright setups as well so even if i were like switch this to like finrear for example um and obviously if i swapped like Kyrie over here with a shion instead Normally, Shion would only provide power and reverse buffs and debuffs, but the stained glass metal, whatever one you get, happen to get, um, will still provide the upright buffs and debuffs for you, so you can just run pure damage for the rest of it. So that's kind of the benefit that these stained glass metals have. As, on top of the fact that they do last for two turns, which is perfect for PvP, which I mentioned for the Foreteller uh, video, is pretty much the main one of the main reasons why Gula, Asset, and Envy were like my top picks amongst the five was because of the fact that you can still use them for the rest of the game on top of you can actually use them for PvP more effectively as well. On top of the fact even more that they also provide 110% guilt bonus, which is actually 10% more than what the foretellers provide, most of them anyways. Era provides 120%, but as in most cases, that extra 10% doesn't typically ever actually do much. However, a 30 or 40% difference between what Kyrie and Shion EX Plus provide uh, is always going to be actually affecting what a setup does on top of the fact too that the stained glass metals are actually the second strongest aoe metals in the game and don't rely off hp either that can actually help you provide uh create some really interesting and beneficial setups so in a way part of what i'm trying to say is like because most people aren't going to have the top tier setups and such uh even though the stained glass metals don't affect the top tier barely i should bet i should add they they barely don't affect it 
for anybody else who don't have top tier setups, the stained glass metals will significantly help out your setups. Even if you only have one copy of a foretelling metal, they will actually significantly increase your damage quite a lot. On topping of just help providing the rest of your buffs and debuffs too. That's probably one of my favorite things about the Kyren Shoni X Plus combination with the stained glass metals. Literally will provide all buffs and debuffs for every single Keyblade in the entire game, which I think is pretty cool. Now, in terms of setups, I know a lot of people's main concerns about these four towers is pretty much because of the fact that they don't heal your HP at all whatsoever. And they don't provide uh, PSM buffs or debuffs, uh, kind of like how Kai and Shoni X plus, okay? Now, in terms of the attribute part, I'm pretty much going to restate the same thing that I mentioned for the four towers, which is that... The fact that the stained glass metals only provide a single attribute like power, speed, or magic honestly isn't relevant or that important at all whatsoever because there's tons of metals in the game as of right now, especially with the prime metals, that will easily be able to cover any of the attributes that you happen to be missing. Just for example, even if you happen to be running stained glass number seven in a setup that provides only power buffs and debuffs, you can still run a prime Riku versus Roxas, for example, in like slot two or three to easily get max magic buffs and debuffs. Uh, like you can do that easily and the rest of your setup can still be pure damage metals. Now even Riku versus Roxas is still a pretty good damage metal in itself too. So like it's, it's not very difficult at all whatsoever to make a setup with a different attribute stained glass metal. Uh, going back to the whole HP thing, there's only actually a handful of metals within the entire game in terms of like, you know, the best metals anyways, best AOE metals, um, whose damage are actually determined by HP. As of right now, the newest of the foretellers are affected by HP, okay? Um, and they are the best AoE medals in the game, okay? The second best AoE medals are all the stained glass medals, even including the current ones. They all have the same multipliers. They are not tied to HP at all whatsoever, and they are going to be at the beginning of your setup. So you can still put them in the beginning of the setup, and then put whatever other AoE medals towards the middle and end of your setup. And then the second group of AoE medals in the game are going to be those like old tier 8 uh, upright reverse debuffer medals that we had forever ago. Um, they are like the third best AOE medals in the game as well. They are based off HP. Um, so for the most part, only the newest foretellers and the old tier eight debuffer medals are actually affected by HP. But for the most part, almost every other AOE medal within the game um, that's good anyways, uh, are actually not affected by HP at all what whatsoever. So even if you wanted to, you can still run uh, Sword Kart EX, HD Aqua, the, you know, the Wayfinder Trio. Even the old four telemetals, the tier 7 ones, those will work. Kingdom Hearts 3, Riku, uh, the Prime Metals. These are still AoE metals. Now, technically, they aren't, you know, meant for AoE. They do more damage against single target opponents, but they still... They still are AoE. You can still make AoE setups that don't rely on HP using the new stained glass metals. Now, I'm not saying this is what you want to do in a setup. I'm just saying that the option is there. So even for example, if you happen to be a complete beginner to the game, like you literally just started like a month ago or something, the stained glass metals are actually a very good pick to actually pull from because they will literally help you burst through the game pretty easily um, and they will be significant for you as a new player uh, for quite a while. Especially because of the fact that the Kyren Shion EX banners are no longer in the shop anymore. They're completely gone and we have no idea when it's going to be the next time they're going to pop up again. Wouldn't be a bad idea to be honest. Uh, now, for any of you out there who are wondering, well, why can't you just get a Foreteller medal instead of a Stained Glass medal for a beginner? Uh, it's going to be mainly because of the fact that the Stained Glass medals provide both the upright and reverse buffs on top of the fact they have 10% higher than most of the foretellers. Basically everything I mentioned beforehand. <laughs> They're going to be a lot more usable uh, compared to the foretellers as a beginner. Now whether or not I think you should actually pull for these stained glass medals, all right? I actually went ahead and did my research in advance like usual in turn when it comes to medals like these are kind of like mm, which one should I pull for and such? Uh, I will leave this link down below for you guys to check out if you'd like. I also have included in my metal analysis articles already written uh, in case you want to check that out. 
Um, but I created a page uh, going over the same type of data that like kind of similar to I did uh, for the previous stained glass metals trying to basically find out the each of their versatility rates which essentially means like out of these three stained glass metals which ones are most likely going to be the most effective across like you know all the keyblades and such okay uh, and the criteria that I used this time in order to decide that was just simply figuring out what attribute slots are in each keyblade for slots one and two now the reason why I do this is simply because of the fact that uh, regardless of whether or not you choose to use the stained glass metal by itself or you choose to use it alongside a Kyrie Shion EX Plus, uh, it's not going to change the data, the data because you're still going to be using the stained glass metal in either slots one or two regardless if you use it with Kyrie Shion EX Plus. So I just looked at slots one and two for that aspect. And the results that I basically found out was that for slot one, uh, power is the most versatile, uh, magic is in second, and speed is in third, okay? For slot two across the keyblades, magic is in first, speed is in second, and power is last, okay? Um, and overall, so like if you take both of those into account, uh, magic is in first place, power is in second place, and speed is in last place. So amongst all three of the stained glass metals, stained glass number eight, the magic one, is going to be the most versatile, and the power one, stained glass number seven, is going to be the second most versatile. Now I'm not saying you should get the magic or power stained glass metals, it's just there to help you aid your decision making process. In general though, aside from beginners, uh, whether or not I think you should pull for the stained glass metals, uh, let's take into account real quick. Let's say you pulled for a foretell metal. If you, by some miracle of God, still have enough jewels to pull for a stained glass metal as well, okay, and you want to pull for a stained glass metal, I highly recommend that you try and pick a stained glass metal whose attribute is different from your foreteller that you happen to obtain, okay? Uh, and this is just mainly to help try and cover as many grounds as possible. Sure, if you got like a set, for example, you can still get stained glass number seven, the power one, if you really want to. Um, although it, it, it probably makes more sense, especially for the multi-attributed keyblades, uh, such as like starlight or something, for you to want to try and get a different attribute. So that way you can just cover your grounds better. For any of us veteran players, it's actually going to be a little bit of a tough choice as to whether or not we should actually pull for any stained glass metals, um, especially if we already have a foreteller, just because of the fact that, like, the stained glass metals, yes, uh, they provide some benefits, but there's nothing, like, absolutely game-breaking about the stained glass metals that makes me go, yes, I need to grab these. <laughs> Unless you're in a situation, like I described before, where you only have, like, one foreteller, or you don't have any foretellers. Um, or you just, you know, like I said before, you can't recreate any of the meta setups that like I have shown in my meta tab. In that case, like you might want to consider getting a stained glass model, they'll help out a lot. Uh, but if you are like a top tier player and you you do have relatively similar meta setups already, it's, it's going to be a bit of a tough sell as to whether or not you should actually get the stained glass metal. And that's going to be something that dependent on what your needs are individually as a player. But for everybody else, for the most part, the stained glass metals are going to be super useful to obtain. No, they're not necessary, but yes, they are very useful. Um, and in my opinion, they're probably more useful than the actual foretellers themselves. Personally, what I'll recommend doing whenever the banners happen to show up is waiting to do your pulls until near the end of the actual banners uh, expiration, just because of the fact that we want to see what are some of the other metals going to be popping up. I know the new uh, Super Burst uh, Sephiroth metal just came out as long as the Prime Cloud metal just came out. Uh, but I'm curious to see if there's any other metals that are going to be coming out uh, alongside those as well um, towards the end of the stained glass banner. So, so even if you pull, I would recommend waiting on doing your pulls first before anything else just to see if anything better happens to come out first. But other than that, if you enjoyed the video, please leave a like and subscribe and hit that bell button. It's the best way I know when I upload more videos such as this one. Uh, I know I've been gone for a week, guys. I'm sorry. I've been... Uh, doing quite a lot of things behind the scenes for the website, especially trying to catch up on all the latest medals like uh, articles and such too. But I, I am back. I'm going to be posting more videos more often this week. Okay. Um, and I'm sorry for the wait. But other than that, my name is Brian from Kinemartini Crash Nation and I hope you guys have a fantastic day. Peace y'all.